always, um, welcome back uh, once again now to our uh, continuation on the glories of Sri Vrindavan Dham. We, um, as you know, just finished our mini-series on Lord Chaitanya's uh, journey from Puri to Vrindavan. So we'll go back to our mini-series on the six seasons of Vrindavan, meaning uh, summer, spring, winter, autumn, dewy season, and the monsoon seasons. So far, we've actually done uh, summer, spring, autumn, and winter. So that leaves us uh, monsoon and the dewy season. So today, we'll start with the monsoon season. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swaminiti Namane, Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pacharine, Nivishesha Shunyavadi, Paschatya Deshatarane, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. So, the monsoon season brings many things to mind, actually. I was thinking this morning for myself, it, it brings to mind the, um, the beautiful color of our uh, beloved Krishna's bodily form. For example, Brahma Samhita, chapter 5, text 30, um, reads, I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, who is adept on playing his flute, with blooming eyes like lotus petals, with head bedecked with peacock feathers, with the figure of beauty tinged with the hue of blue clouds, and his unique loveliness charming millions of cupids. Now, although Krishna is sometimes depicted as, as blackish, his, his color is not exactly uh, blackish like nighttime. It's more uh, bluish black. Uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur compares Krishna's color to the, the color of the Atashi flower. Of course, most, most of you don't know what is an Atashi flower, but I see them sometimes here in India. It's a bluish black, uh, very beautiful flower, Atashi flower. And Krishna's color, uh, bodily color, is described in most of the Vedic reference books as Mega Varnam. Mega Varnam. That's translated as the color of uh, dark rain clouds that are filled with water or clouds that are ready to shower rain. We've all seen that anywhere in the world. Therefore, Krishna's color is compared to a uh, bluish, blackish rain cloud in the monsoon season. <clears throat> Sri Prabhupada, in one room conversation, he, he once said, Yes, Krishna is bluish, like the sky. When you see the clear, bluish sky, aren't you happy? <laughs> oh, today is a very nice day, blue sky. That is Krishna's color, Sri Prabhupada said. And uh, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, in his uh, epic uh, book, uh, Jaiva Dharma, uh, chapter 34, he writes, Krishna, whose complexion resembles the luminous dark hue of fresh monsoon clouds, is the sole proprietor of my heart. Beside him is the darling daughter of Sri Bhrishabhanu Maharaj, Shimati Radhika. She is my ladyship, eternally enthroned within my heart. She is my ladyship, he writes, eternally enthroned within my heart. So there also Bhakti Muttakura refers to the, the, the beautiful hue of Krishna's um, form. So this uh, monsoon season appears just after the summer season, which here in India means usually uh, July, August. And I've been through several uh, summers now <laughs> in Vrindavan. This monsoon season is very much welcomed in Vrindavan. In fact, Sridhar Prabhupada writes in Krishna book, chapter 20, and I, I quote, in India, after the scorching heat of the summer, the rainy season is very welcome. The clouds accumulating in the sky, covering the sun and the moon, become very pleasing to the people as they expect rainfall at every moment. 
after summer, the advent of the rainy season is considered to be a life-giving source for everyone. The thunder and occasional lightning are also very pleasurable to the people. And I have practical experience again, it's so true. <laughs> now, in my research in the Vrindavan Research Institute, I came across several of our acharyas who describe in their writings that it's actually uh, Srimati Vrindadevi, the assistant of Purnamasi, who calls upon the monsoon season to appear. It's her mercy. She calls upon the monsoon season to appear. You know, like seeing how the blazing sun and the harsh summer air has made Vrindavan very hot and dry, Vrinda Devi calls her cousin sister. She calls her cousin sister, whose name is Bharka, B-A-R-K-H-A, Bharka, which literally means the rain, to descend upon Braja and give relief to all the Brajabhasis. This Varga, this demigoddess, she's um, not even a demigoddess, she's an inhabitant of Vrindavan. <laughs> she plays a very intimate role in, uh, in, 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 in Braja Leela. Uh, she's the cousin sister of, of Vrinda Devi, and she asks her, please, come give relief to the Brajabhasis. Now, it's described that uh, Bharga Devi, uh, monsoon season, personified, she uh, wears pink color garments with a long uh, black braid coming down to her feet. She creates and walks in windy and moist air. I thought that was so beautiful. Bhargat. She creates and walks in windy and moist air. And her eyes are the most beautiful amongst all the seasonal custom, uh, cousin sisters of Vrinda Devi. Her eyes are the most beautiful amongst all the seasonal cousin sisters of Vrinda Devi. And appreciating her timely service, we've, we've used that word now, her timely service, Brajabhasis, they pray to her as follows. I offer my respects to uh, Bhaga Ritu, Ritu means season. I offer my respects to Bhaga Ritu, who enters Braj by the order of Vrinda Devi, and who accepts service for pleasing the divine couple. That's how they pray, the Brajabhasis. Now our acharyas explain just how uh, Bhaga Ritu pleases the divine couple, Shri Shri Radha and Krishna. They say she does so by uh, cooling the burning desires of the divine couple to be together, not just the heat, but she cools the burning desires of the divine couple to be together. How? By restricting people's movements during that season because of the heavy uh, monsoon rains, which give Radha and Krishna more opportunity to meet in secret places. <laughs> so much rain, they don't want to go out in the rain. But Radha and Krishna, they find their ways and they're able to meet. So it's a very nice season for Radha and Krishna. Pangs of separation are mitigated. It's like the rains of the monsoon season, um, they also facilitate the meetings in the sense that they make the kunjas and, and the forest, meaning the groves and the forest, very dense when it rains. Everything becomes very, um, it grows, it uh, becomes very lush and very, very green. Makes the kunjas and forest very dense, which help to hide Radha and Krishna from their in-laws. And in this regard, I came across such a beautiful prayer by our Vrindavanishwari Shimatri Radharani, which uh, in that season, monsoon season, she offers to the creepers, vines, and flowers of Vrindavan's forests. She says, Oh my true friends, oh my true friends, the creepers and vines of this forest who hide me from my in-laws. And oh, you golden kadamba flowers, who disguise me and keep my in-laws from seeing me. And oh, my best friend, this forest of Vrindavan, I offer my gratitude to all of you. Such a nice sentiment from Srimati Radharani to 
all these personalities who you know allow her to have her association undetected with Krishna in the Vrindavan forest. Now, I also came across a similar prayer offered by Krishna to the Vrindavan forest. <laughs> Krishna says, O forest of Vrindavan, I am eternally indebted to you who always, who always give me a chance to enter into the beautiful and secluded association of the most beautiful Shirada and who give me a chance to serve her beauty. O forest of Vrindavan, all glories to your vines and to your flowers. The divine couple appreciating the service of the Vrindavan forest in its variegated ways to facilitate um, the, pa the loving pastimes of Radha and Krishna. They have to hide from the in-laws. Now, uh, the, the most beautiful with her eyes and merciful uh, Bhagavatam, the deity, we could say, the personified deity of, of the monsoon season, she can be identified by the fact that she holds a bird called the Chataka bird in her left hand, just as Vrinda Devi holds a parrot in her left hand as well. If you're looking for Bhagavatam in the monsoon season, she'll be holding a Chataka bird in her left hand. That's so sweet. Now, in Karvi Karnapura's illustrious um, Ananda Vrindavan Champo, there's a very beautiful description of the moment, the very moment that Krishna first sees uh, uh, Bhagavatu at the beginning of the monsoon season. Other times she's hidden, unmanifest, but she is the monsoon season. So as soon as it starts, she's there, and Kavikonapur writes, the moment that Krishna sees her, he writes that Krishna's amazed to see her walking through moist and windy air, as we described earlier, pervaded by a, a sweet fragrance from a garland of fresh kadamba flowers. He goes on to write in a very, you could say, poetic way. Actually, I'll, I'll quote him here. He writes, uh, the swarms of bumblebees darting through the air are her provocative glances cast at Krishna. And that, uh, also he says, she wears effulgent, attractive blue garments in the form of freshly formed, glistening rain clouds. This is how Krishna is perceiving her. And the gentle rumbling of rain clouds fill the forest with the sweet sound of her elegant voice. She has an elegant voice. She offers newly sprouted barley grass as a bed for Krishna's pleasure. And that this colorful uh, green uh, bed of fresh grass defeats the beauty of a collection of the brightest green emeralds. Wow, he's so poetic. Then Kavi Kondapur goes on to write that the millions of indragopas, which are like uh, tiny red insects, crawling over the ground, color the delicate feet of this goddess with an effulgent uh, red lac. This is how Krishna is seeing her. A row of splendid restless cranes adorn her throat as, as like a pearl necklace. And fanned tails of dancing peacocks comprise her beautiful hair. The fragrant air blowing by the Arjuna trees laden with sweet flowers form her pleasant breath. Her pleasant breath. Her gentle, enchanting face is moistened with tears of tiny raindrops, and petals of bright yellow kadamba flowers form her hairs that stand on end due to a rarely perceived ecstasy. <laughs> She's a very special person. This is how Krishna sees her. <laughs> Maybe the first day, first day of the monsoon season, he sees her like this. And he goes on to say, she eagerly awaits to offer Krishna a fragrant garland made from very tiny malati flowers. Her restless eyes are lowered out of respect and shyness while she offers her services to her beloved Krishna. Everyone in Vrindavan loves Krishna. They may have a different 
ways of serving and expressing that love. But it's very nice to hear how uh, you know, the monsoon season personified her loving relationship with Krishna. Now, Kavi Kanapur concludes this amazing descriptions of, of Bhargavita by writing that as an expert maid servant, she makes wonderful garlands to decorate the whole of the forest of Vrindavan with an abundance of fragrant flowers. And uh, overflowing with love and affection for Krishna, she always desires to serve him in various ways during her turn, her turn as one of the six seasons. <laughs> They'll have to wait. <laughs> they don't serve all. Of course, as we've mentioned many times, these six seasons are existing also simultaneously in Vrindavan. In different parts of Vrindavan, Radha and Krishna can walk into any one of these six seasons. But also, <laughs> they come one after another. <laughs> Inconceivable, but transcendentally true. So, uh, other acharyas also give amazing details about the monsoon season in Braj. In fact, we'll probably have two or three more classes about the monsoon season. They write that the monsoon season in Vrindavan is characterized by all the uh, 12 main forests in Vrindavan becoming very lush green. Very lush green. It almost happens overnight. Again, I've been in Vrindavan several years now, so there's the summer, and when the rain comes, monsoon comes, it's mystical. Within a few days, everything's lush and green. Vrindavan's a very mystical place. It's very lush green. And as a result, uh, one, of the, one of the special uh, beauties of, 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 the, of the rainy season is that it brings all kinds of blossoming flowers to Vrindavan. I heard Prabhupada say recently on a, on a tape that uh, flowers are the only opulence left in Kali Yuga. <laughs> flowers. <laughs> so uh, many flowers come. And the Manjaris and the Sakis, uh, they take great pleasure in preparing outfits and ornaments. Shringara, we had a class on that, how the gopis make you know, flower earrings and uh, flower braid. Uh, they, they braid the um, Radharani's hair with... Um, with flowers and so many different types, of bracelets, etc. The sakis and the manjaris, they take great pleasure in preparing um, outfits and ornaments for Radha and Krishna out of different types of flowers and leaves. And our pujaris in Iskand, they know uh, how wonderful that service is. For example, on Radhastami, um, it's traditional in our, in our movement that we offer the divine couple a flower outfit. So this is sadhana bhakti. Uh, devotional service and practice, but we're practicing what the Brajabhasis do spontaneously and with full love when they make the flower outfit. But practice makes perfect, so we, we can get to that point by following Sri Rupa So it's written that these uh, sakis and these manjaris, they stitch these flower outfits, get this, with the thread of uh, virgin banana tree trunks. Virgin, brand new banana tree trunks. They strip them and they use like a thread. And the, uh, they do it with the needles of karir. K-A-R-E-E-R, -E -E karir. It's a type of thorn that we have experience of here in Vrindavan. Sometimes those thorns, they fall to the ground and they get in your feet. But the Brajabhasis are so expert. They use this thorn along with this virgin banana tree trunk, uh, you could say like uh, thread, to, to make very beautiful fragrant flower outfits that I was reading never fade or become wilted. They never fade or become wilted. They can make them and put them aside theoretically for whatever time. They always remain fresh. And I was also reading that they're traditionally offered to Radha and Krishna after they've taken their separate baths in rainwater, in rainwater, which means the, the monsoon rains. They'll bathe in the monsoon rains, and after that, 
the Sakis and the cowherd boys, respectively, dry Radha and Krishna with towels, and then um, dress in these beautiful flower outfits with the Sringara, or the different paraphernalia, also made out of flowers. Shri Bhadra Bhumi, Shri Vrindavan Dham Ki. This is what we aspire for. Nothing in this world compares to this. One of my godbrothers took sannyas, and I remember Papa told him, never look back and think you've left anything valuable behind, and never envy the position of the materialistic sense enjoyers. Just look forward to the positive alternative of Krishna consciousness, and this is all very real, as Sri Prabhupada has explained. Now, I was also reading that during the monsoon season, um, Rod, this is very cute. Rod and Krishna sometimes hold bows and arrows made of flowers, and they playfully, Kali, they playfully uh, fight with each other in a specific uh, kunja um, called Kandarpa kunja. Kandarpa kunja. And as I was researching and I found that, I put that also on. <laughs> I always keep a, a list of names so that I can give perspective um, disciples uh, on the day of their initiation. Oh, this is a good one. Kandarpa Kunja Devi Dasi. So that's where Radha and Krishna, only during the monsoon season, with these bows and arrows fashioned from you know, flowers, they have their little battle there. Kandarpa Kunja means a, a flower grove of Cupid. Then even more details I found that it's the Sakis, meaning the Astasakis, the eight girlfriends of Srimati Radharani, they prepare those arrows, and specifically, they prepare the tips of those arrows. You know, that's the, what, what goes in, <laughs> the tip. <laughs> Go, you know, when you're fighting, it's the tip. It has to be very strong and very dangerous. But they make the tips of those arrows with rosebuds, with rosebuds, which, it's described, when hitting the bodies of the divine couple, make them feel like the most fortunate lovers in the universe. That's how one Acharya puts it. <laughs> when you get hit with that, the tip of that arrow, which is a rosebud, then it makes Radha and Krishna feel like the most fortunate lovers in the universe. So now, um, Ananda Vrindavan Champo also reveals to us the effects, the beginning of the monsoon season has on um, Vrindavan itself, because this is the first of, of this little series on the, on the monsoon season. We'll get two or three lectures, I'm not sure. So the, the beginning, as it begins, Ananda Vrindavan Champa reveals the, the effects, the beginning of the monsoon season has on Braj. And therein it's described that um, as the rains begin to fall in the monsoon season, it appears that the entire city of Vrindavan is bathed in this first shower of the rainy season. That's how it's described. And after that first rainfall, which is so much welcomed by the people of Raj, proud peacocks, famous for their uh, dancing ability, they start strutting about the rooftops of every home with their you know, long, thick, green tail feathers fanned out, it's described, to dry in the sun. And as the sun sets over the town of Vrindavan, uh, it, its reddish rays, redder than bimbu, bimbu fruit, it's described. It's a very red fruit. Redder than bimbu fruit. They, those rays spread across the clear western sky. And those red sun rays look like the line, the line of cinder, uh, Sindura on a woman's hair part. Anyway, <laughs> we'll, save, we'll save the rest for the next few lectures. I think that's a lot to, to think about and to, to meditate on and to, to relish. This is how we should engage our minds. More to be said. There's more to be said about this, I would say, favorite, one of the favorite, favorite seasons of Vrindavan. And we'll continue in part two about monsoon season in a few days. So I'd, I'd like to finish today with yet another way 
we are reminded of the monsoon season. At the beginning of this lecture, we mentioned how the color of Krishna's body reminds us of the, of the monsoon, monsoon season and vice versa. And Srila Prabhupada gives us another comparison of the heavy rains of, of monsoon. He gives us a comparison of the heavy rains of monsoon. And this I found in a letter he wrote to my dear godbrother Abhiram Prabhu in the 1970s. Prabhupada wrote, Yes, you are feeling increase in strength with increase in service. And I am not the actual bestower of mercy. Rather, I'm just a messenger for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So just work hard for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his mercy will fall upon you like torrents of rain in the monsoon season. <laughs> torrents of rain in the monsoon season. So may we all, as uh, Chita Prabhupada's followers, Always work hard, helping Lord Chaitanya spread the Sankirtan movement so that Sridhar Prabhupada's mercy, Mahaprabhu's mercy, and Prabhupada's mercy will always fall on us like torrents of rain in the monsoon season. Another way to think of the monsoon season. We want a, a monsoon rain of Mahaprabhu's and Sridhar Prabhupada's mercy. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu, so much. We're back in a couple of days with more about this uh, favorite season. Shishi Gorni Tai Ki, Shishi Krishna Balaram Ki, Shishi Radha Shama Sundar Ki, Vrindavaneshwari Shimati Radharani Ki, Mayapur Dham Ki, Shishi Gorni Tai Ki, Shri Krishna Shankirtan Yagya Ki, Back Home, Back to Gandhi Yagya Ki. Take all the fallen souls with us as per Siddha Prabhupada's desire. Jay Jay Sisi Radhe. Oh, glorious to the monsters.